that's the cloud office. And, uh, and, and really what the cloud office represents to me is it's, it's kind of like a time, uh, it's kind of like if you think about the old Star Trek Enterprise where they would step into the hollow deck, right? It's almost like a time wormhole where you can step in, you can do business with anybody anywhere in the world, and then you can step out and you get back to your life. And if you think about a real estate agent, what's the most important commodity we have as real estate professionals? Our time, right? That is it. Your time is so valuable and you don't have a lot of it. And I know we all work 18 hour days, but um, at some level, you know, the hour to get ready, the hour to go to the office. Jackie and I were talking about some agents that she works with and she says they have a training every day in Beverly Hills or every couple days in Beverly Hills. And they're like an hour and a half away and they don't have time to go, you know, basically that's like a four hour chunk out of their work day just to go get some training or run into their office. And, um, you know, we just don't have that kind of time anymore, right? We gotta get going, we gotta get busy. So what we found was it's allowed for us to deliver training, support, education, collaboration, which is huge. So I'll get into the kind of the collaborative piece here in a second. But, but so I like to think of that as the real game changer of game changers, right? So we have the cloud brokerage. Well, because the cloud ultimately takes the inefficiencies out of real estate, right? Bricks and mortar, redundant overhead, management by walking around, all of these sort of, you know, if you think about you open up multiple offices, you got to have staff in every office. You got to have a lease at every office or you buy a building. You got to fill it with equipment, phone systems. And so basically you got to do that for every single office you open up. And so that gets costly, it gets time consuming. You might not want to travel to some of your satellite offices, so of course that office is going to struggle. So this was sort of Glenn Sanford, who's my coach and mentor, also the chairman of EXPs. This was sort of his big aha. Um, and I'll tell you kind of the story of, uh, and, and really the cloud office opened up because we made it more efficient. It allows for us to put money back in our pockets vis-a-vis -vis the rev share and the stock. Okay, so the agent ownership, these are really two of the three biggest game changers. Agent ownership, cloud brokerage, and, uh, and then obviously the rev share. So a little bit about me. Um, I am the co-founder. Um, I've been the president. Uh, I've been the uh, chief cultural officer. So keeping the culture, kind of a team attitude, team atmosphere was very important to me. I played college basketball, so that was always kind of my, my role on the team was sort of team cohesion and, and, and kind of motivating everybody and keeping everybody focused. And so we, we brought a lot of that to the, to the cultural department and the, the values, the mission statement, et cetera. I now have an organization personally that's over a thousand agents in probably 30 states of Canada. Um, and now I'm actually kind of coming back to my roots as a team leader and, uh, and, and sales agent and, uh, and just really trying to help as many people as I can. I mean, that's what I'm here to do. Um, if you look on my old uh, college folder, it says helping others is a life's work, right? Um, here's kind of our mission statement. So at eXp, we want to deliver so much value to us real estate professionals that it would be irresponsible for us to go anywhere else. All right, and that kind of stems from Glenn's old philosophy as a realtor. Uh, Glenn taught me when we were running around chasing leads and, and working internet leads that you know he realized quickly that there were a lot of legacy agents in his market. He was up in Bellingham, Washington. Um, you know there were a lot of seasoned, established realtors up there, and so he was kind of a techie. He was a newcomer to the market, and he didn't know how he was exactly going to break into this little bedroom boutique community. And so one of his philosophies was he was just going to over service his clients to the point where they had no choice but to use him. Okay, so think about that. He's going to over service them. He's going to deliver so much value to their lives and their searching home searching experience or their listing experience that they had no choice but to use him. Well, that's very similar to our philosophy as a company, right? We want to provide so much value to your business that you really would be irresponsible to go anywhere else. Okay, uh, again, here are some of the game changers. Cloud officing, which allows for residual income, allows for agent ownership. And then really there's a fourth one, which I like to think of as sort of business planning, brand development, tech tools, lead generation, sort of the systems piece. We're really, we're all about systems. Um, how many people are familiar with Robert Kiyosaki, Cash Quadrants, right? Um, so they have, you know, you have a job and you are self-employed on one side, and then you've got business owner and investor on the other side, right? So job or a self-employed, well, that's where 80% of the population is. Unfortunately, 80% of the money is on the other side, right? So does anybody know the difference between being self-employed and being a business owner? That didn't hear me say it yesterday. Um, the difference is systems and teams. So part of that is, by the way, so having systems, we're big on systems. The other part is having a team. 
and by the way, I don't mean go out and hire 20 people tomorrow. Recognizing your team, recognizing your title rep, rep recognizing your mortgage, recognizing your HVAC uh, people, that's part of your team. You are, the, you are the tip of the spear for your entire team and because you are the first point of contact with the consumer, um, you gotta represent your team, you gotta let them know that you care and obviously they're letting us know they care. Thank you very much today for, for putting this all together. Um, and, uh, and so that's impo important. So systems and teams allows for you to be a business owner. You wanna be a business owner. You don't wanna be self-employed. You don't wanna just have a job and that's kind of what's important about the stock piece, right? We are no longer employees of a brokerage. We aren't just hanging our license with the brokerage. We're shareholders. We're stakeholders, right? We're owners of our brokerage. We're building our own asset. We're not just building our ownership asset. We're building our own asset while we're out there selling houses and helping buyers and sellers. So think about this. Um, you know, I'm a, kind of a student of the history of real estate, and I kind of look at the different, uh, different models over the years, right? So you think about Century 21. You know, they brought something new to the market in the 70s. Anybody ever work for Century 21 in here? A couple people, right? Um, so Century 21, uh, you can now own your own office, right? That was a huge game changer. And what happened? They became the biggest brokerage in the world. So then a few years later, maybe a decade or so later, Remax came out. Anybody work with Remax? A couple people. Uh, Remax, what did they come up with? They brought the concept of franchising to the real estate space, right? So now uh, you could actually buy and franchise off, um, you know, offices and, and it became the biggest brokerage in the world. A few years later, Gary Keller and his partner, is it Joe Williams? Is it Joe Williams? Gary and Joe brought the concept of residual income in the form of profit share. Well, what happened to them? Now they're the biggest brokerage in the world, right? 170,000 realtors. Well, so if you think about that, think about that. Here's EXP, right? 2010s bringing three unique things to the real estate space. Nobody's ever done cloud officing, right? They're starting to now, but nobody did it like we did it. It's part of our DNA, right? You can try it, you can go out and bring one in now. There's some companies, even Keller Williams, I think, is bringing one in. And by the way, Keller Williams, my second favorite brokerage. I was there for three and a half years. Love Keller Williams, great people, great culture. Um, and by the way, I, I should almost take out a, a full page ad thanking Keller Williams uh, for building in a great model that we just made a little better, okay? But, but basically, um, but no, I'm serious. It's, a, it's a, them and, and Craigslist, by the way. All right, so, um, so we also added this concept. We took this piece, profit share, and we made it gross commission-based revenue share. Well, anybody, I'm sure people with EXP know the difference, but I like to think of the difference as, you know, let's say I have some, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars in my wallet and I'm getting ready to take us out for steak dinner. Ariel. Would you like a piece of that $200 before or after I pay for dinner? Before, right, because you're gonna get a piece of the $200. After dinner, it might be 20 bucks, 10 bucks, you know, maybe nothing. I might have overspent on that dinner and there's nothing to share, right? So profit is what's left over after expenses. Gross commissions is the top number, right? It's a big number. So if you're gonna get paid a percentage, a residual of a number, would you rather have a top number or bottom number? Oh. Top number, no brainer. And then we bring in ownership. First time, agent owned real estate company. First time ever. That alone I think will allow us to grow to be 50,000 realtors, okay? So when you start adding all of this up, right? And then you throw the collaboration, the training, the tools, the conversion, the sync. It's just like ridiculous, right? And by the way, who would have wanted to go back to when Gary and Joe were just starting Couple thousand people, who would like to have been a part of that? What about when you were with Remax? What if you were one of the first thousand or 2,000 then? Wouldn't that be awesome? Or how about the first couple thousand that joined Century 21? You'd probably own half the country right now. Well, guess what? We're still in this first early stage. Remember I talked about us being a historic, we're in a historic time for this company. Well, if you think about these all companies became the biggest brokerage of the world, you know, we could be, should be, probably will become the biggest global real estate company in the world. We're already the fastest growing in, in North American history, okay? So this is pretty heady stuff, right? I mean, you think I was kidding about being a part of history. By the way, I'm the son of a like starving artist limo driver, okay? This was, I, you know, I didn't always have a, you know, fancy uh, ascots, it's kind of slipped down here, anyways. But so, um, you know, this is, uh, this is pretty cool and this is what we're all about. And by the way, we're just getting started, okay? 
And so I like to think eXp is a part of this new emerging family of companies, right? You, you, a lot of people say we're the Uber of and we're the Netflix of and you kind of, it's kind of tried and played out, but, but it's kind of true, all right, for us. Because if you think about what do all these companies do? Did, uh, did Airbnb run out and buy a bunch of properties, right? Uh, but they're the fastest growing hospitality company. What about Uber? Did they go out and buy a bunch of cars and then sublease them to drivers to make the money back? No, they did. They partnered with drivers. So what do we do? Do we go out and buy a bunch of leases and a bunch of office buildings and then fill them with equipment and hope realtors come make our money back? No, we just partnered with the world's number one subleasing company, Regis. So we actually have 3,000 offices low worldwide, 120 countries. There's probably, I don't know, we looked in South, South uh, 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 Southern California, how many were there? There's a couple hundred. I mean, they're everywhere and, and all over this area. You've got Regis. So we're not anti-office space. We kind of get that reputation that, oh, you guys don't believe in office space. No, we believe in office space. We just don't believe in paying for it first and then trying to nickel and dime you to make the money back. Okay? We'd rather put the money back. We think you know what to do with your money better than we do. All right? And so we are part of that company. If you think about that analogy, bricks and mortar versus cloud, right? You kind of have this Netflix scenario. So what happened with Netflix versus Blockbuster? Do you think uh, the CEO of Block, I should have his quote up here. He's got a great quote. Anybody ever seen the quote where he talks about how, oh, Netflix streaming on your computer, that'll never work, right? So they said no. They could have bought Netflix for $50 million and they said no, probably somewhere in this period, okay? And they said no. By the way, Blockbuster, what's their business? Delivering movies to houses, right? Renting movies to houses. Um, they're in the business. They probably the 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 biggest brand, probably the only brand. I mean, there was maybe a couple other Hollywood video or whatever, but they're in the business of home movie delivery, and they didn't even see it coming. Like, how incredible is that, right? That's their business. I mean, they had probably an army of people and attorneys and market research analysts and all these people that should have been watching trends and seeing it, and they didn't see it coming. And now look at them. Anybody been to a Blockbuster lately? Right. By the way, who just closed yesterday? Toys R Us. Jeez. Well, and it's not because the people don't want toys. It's just because they can get access to the toys much easier through Amazon and other online companies than they could driving in and finding parking and spending an hour in traffic, right? So basically, we're part of the same kind of movement. Um, we are the fastest growing brokerage in American history. We just hit over 8,000 agents. My guess is we're probably closer to 9,000. We're adding 1,000 a month. That's pretty incredible. Someone even said like 100 a day, Whew, maybe business days. I don't know. But anyways, that's, uh, that's pretty incredible stuff. And we don't typically release the information until we hit that number. But uh, you know, here's our growth chart. We've hit some really amazing uh, milestones over the last couple of years, but it's been pretty steady, 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 steady. You know, we've been written up in a number of magazines, Innovative Brokers of the Year. And right around here, uh, Gene Frederick joined. Anybody know Gene Frederick? Great guy. Um, he's like the Michael Jordan of building brokerages, right? Top recruiter. I've got a slide on Gene. I'll cover him in a little bit. But, but that was a big moment for us because when Michael Jordan joins your company, you got to kind of pay attention, you know, and you probably should start watching what he's doing, work out like he works out. You know, did the, did the 83 Bulls stick with Orlando Rollridge or did they get on the Michael Jordan program? You know, they got on the Michael Jordan program. I mean, we went from being EX who to EX woe, right? And so, um, you know, it's pretty incredible when that happens. And then he brought an army of people under him that were all pretty amazing people. And I know a few of you are in here today because of those people as well. And, uh, and it's just incredible. So, you know, being the co-founder and seeing that happen, it's literally like pinch me. Is this real? Right. And so, you know, some of the other highlights, put that in perspective, though. It took us six years to get to a thousand. The world's largest brokerage today. It took them th 13 years to hit a thousand. We did it in six. We'll be 20,000. If we don't grow at a faster rate than, than we are right now. Right. If nothing changes and we just keep doing a thousand a month. We'll finish the year 20,000. It'll be our ninth birthday at the end of the year. And by the time we're 13, anyone, I should pass around a hat. We should take predictions, right? 50,000 maybe? I don't know. That's pretty incredible growth. Um, so, you know, if you're still on the fence, if you're looking at this opportunity, keep an eye on us. It's, uh, this company's not going away, okay? That's for sure. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about my story. 
I already kind of joked around about, you know, and it's not a joke, but my dad was an artist and he was a, a, a limo driver and a, a delivery guy and he was a day trader and he did a bunch of stuff. Well, that was kind of my life too. I was sort of 10 careers in 10 years. I was a ditch digger. I was a caddy. I was a bus boy. I was a waiter. I worked construction. That was actually my office at the Western Avenue train station in downtown Chicago, right? So I was like in here working for the brush crew, cutting bushes, knocking down, you know, throwing tires full of water with rats in them around and whatever. So if it had a shovel or a name tag, I had the job, okay? I was hired, no problem. You know, I was like, I, whatever. So, but I'm telling the story because this company's changed my life. And that's part of why I'm here today, okay? I'm here because I wanna give back, I wanna help others, I wanna help change your lives just like this company changed my lives. And even more importantly, I wanna help you help change other people's lives, right? Because this is the best vehicle in town to help people and help realtors, right? Because selling houses, is it easy? Right, is this an easy business to be in, selling houses? I mean, we're basically in the create something out of nothing business, am I right? You gotta basically beat bushes, knock on doors, cold call. I mean, that's things that people like cringe when they think about doing that kind of stuff. You know, they take the safe job, they take the steady Eddie job. You know, pat yourself on the back for even being in the business still because it's tough out there. And if you weathered the last couple, dec you know, 10 years or so, uh, pat yourself twice because that was a tough, it's been a tough couple of years, right? And um, so things are getting better. Obviously, we're coming out of the storm, but. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's not, not, not the easiest profession to be in. Well, I'll tell you a little bit more about my story. So I was, uh, you know, working all those crazy jobs and one of them was, uh, uh, I was selling advertising for a commercial real estate magazine. And basically after 29 winters in Chicago, I said I'd had enough. I'm gonna jump in my car, um, throw all my clothes in a garbage bag and rolled out to Arizona with a friend. And he said, I got a job for you. And I go, great. So I jumped in the car, we rolled out. And when we got there, he took the job. So uh, it was actually a mortgage job, by the way. <laughs> so who knows, right? Who knows what? I probably would have been all right doing mortgages. But, but long story short, I got to uh, Arizona and I was like, all right, now what am I going to do? Don't have a job. I kind of like the real estate industry, you know. Um, and so I said, I'm going to get my real estate license. So I went to the real estate school and uh, I applied for a job and I was looking at commercial real estate companies and I was thumbing through Craigslist and one of the job postings was, uh, residential team looking for team leader, right? Well, it happened to be Glenn Sanford, and this is what the Craigslist ad looked like. So it was something like this. He said, uh, people wanted for hazardous journey, low wages, bitter cold, long hours of complete darkness. Stop me if this sounds familiar. Uh, safe return doubtful, uh, honor and recognition in the event of success, however. All right, well, it was similar to this ad. I'm joking, but this is, of course, uh, Sir William Shackleton's uh, ad when he wanted to explore the South Pole. Uh, by the way, they had a line around the building for this ad, right? And by the way, I think about this too when I'm putting ads out there. I'm like, I should really just be like, this is not easy. It's going to be tough, but if you really can step up, you know, I'll show you how to, you know, be awesome. But uh, because, right? I mean, this isn't easy, but if if you do it right, if you do it the way we can show you how to do it. There is uh, honor and recognition in the event of success, and a lot of money too. And so this was literally us running around showing people EXP. You know, uh, I kind of think of this was like we were the safest ship in the storm when the market crunched. And that was kind of the genesis of EXP's uh, concept was, you know, when we left Keller Williams, I was his team leader at Keller Williams for three and a half years. Um, we started Buyer Tours Realty, which was a traditional office, and we opened up six cities and six markets, six leases, six sets of uh, staff and brokers and salaries and all that stuff. And, uh, and then of course, that was in 2008, about five months later, market crashed, and now we were a quarter of a million dollars a year in the hole, or a quarter of a million dollars in the hole. He was running about 80, 90 grand a month in overhead. So when we were cast off the sort of traditional real estate um, uh, island, we had to find a better ship, right? So that was the sort of the demergence of this cloud office piece. And Glenn said, let's create an economy-proof business plan. You know, that was his vision, right? I wanna create an economy-proof, and that's, pretty, that's a pretty heady statement if you think about it, right? So here we were dragging around this EXP model, no one looking at it, right? 
no one, no one cared. No offices, forget that. Um, well, anyways, we found you know a few early adopters, some brave souls, right? Nell, you know, you're, you're probably the most senior EXP agent in here, right? And uh, um, what is it? Two years, going on two and a half years now. One and a half years. So other than me, you're the. But back then, you know, this was in 2009, 2010. Um, you know, there, there weren't a lot of people who, who knew what the cloud was. By the way, we didn't even call it the cloud. We were, we were like the web 2.0 real estate company or something ridiculous. Um, so Glenn uh, basically took me under his wing, um, showed me how to be a good realtor, but he also showed me how to be a business person. And I think that's an important piece of the EXP philosophy is we're not just a bunch of realtors looking for deals. We're business people who happen to be in the real estate space. And I think there's a fundamental difference between the two mindsets, right? You know, one is I think of more like a hunter gatherer, just looking for looking for that, you know, trophy. You know, they gotta get the meat for the, you know, and they gotta whatever, and then they gotta use the whole buffalo and the whole elk, and they can't because they, you know, by the way, you know why they use the whole buffalo? Because they didn't know when the next buffalo was coming. Right? So when I hear agents say, hey, well, I got to have 100%. I got to keep all my money. I'm like, well, what is it? Because you don't know when your next deal is coming? Or, you know, by the way, I mean, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll save this for a second. But, but so Glenn showed me, hey, let's be farmers, right? Let's be, let's be business builders. And, and let's have something to show for life in sales after we're done selling. So that's kind of what I'm here to show you how to do is create a life for you after your last sale, right? So now, fast forward, I've been doing this model one form or another. I mean, EXP started in 2009, but I started working with Glenn in 2004. So it, we were always kind of running a similar play uh, to the EXP model. Well, flash forward, after 15 years in real estate, not only could I retire today, but the grandkids I don't even have could retire today. Okay, this company has done so well for me, and I've done well for this company. And uh, and by the way, I'm just getting started. Okay, I'm not hanging it up. I'm not going to retire, although I could. But it's nice to have the option, right? It's nice to have the option to retire. Um, but you know, I can take a weekend off. I can go play with my kids. I can not have to pick up my phone because I'm worried it's a sign call every two seconds, right? So it's nice to have that, you know, and, and, and that's what EXP can do for everybody in this room, okay? And, uh, and let me show you what my life as a sales agent looked like, right? So that was me. Anybody know, anybody familiar with the myth of Sisyphus, right? The Greek definition of hell, pushing a rock up a hill only to have it roll back down again and again for eternity. So how many people had a good month last month? Sales. How many houses did you sell? One. Okay, that's a good month. Uh, uh, you got your... Okay, that's a great month. Um, that's a great quarter, even maybe a great year for some people. Yeah, okay, you're a capper. Congratulations. <laughs> so, um, so I assume you got paid on that deal, correct? You got your commission. So, um, and you're going to get another commission on that deal next month? No. Oh no. So that's just one time. Okay. So you got. So so um, how many people had a good year last year? How many houses did you sell? Ariel, how many houses did you sell? Okay, so 20 or 14, 15 deals. So, um, so you, you know, you probably have a pretty good lifestyle. Um, how many houses did you guys sell this year? What about the year after that? Probably 40. How about the year after that? Probably 40. The year after that, <laughs> the year after that. So basically, right, I mean, do you ever get to stop as a typical real estate agent? Do you ever get to stop pushing the rock up the hill? Because what do they say? Every year you start over at zero every month. You reset the clock every day. You wake up broke. Um, you know that's my life as a sales agent. I was a buyer agent. I had you know 20 leads a day showing up. I was double, triple booked on weekends, showing 30, 40 houses in 120 degree heat in freaking Queen Creek, Arizona. Right. You know? Anyways, um, so that was my life, and then this we became my life. So this was another. This was the next five years of my life, right? So I fell off my mountain bike, thinking I was cute and trying to do a little. Remember, we were talking about eighties. We were we were all eighties kids. I was doing my little BMX hop off a bike. Boop, fell over, broke my hip. Clean break right through here, right? Couldn't get up. I went to get up. My leg didn't come with me. I'm like, uh oh, I think I'm in trouble, right? Burning. The, the asphalt was like 130 degrees, burning, literally burns on my arm, and. Uh, and uh, that was a nightmare. Now imagine, you're a commission-based professional. Your wife works for you and your business. She doesn't work for the 
hospital and have a big benefits package or anything like that. So we're paying out of pocket, medical bills, can't walk, couldn't get out of bed for two months. The next six months was me in a walker like this. Because by the way, when they pin it, all right, anybody ever break a hip? Okay, please don't. Uh, it's terrible. But if you do, uh, get the replacement because this means you can't put weight on it. Right now, they said you're young. You're gonna to have to get your hip replaced three or four times, and you know it's only good for 15 years. And so we're gonna save it. Well, what that meant was about a year of pain and suffering and lack of mobility. And by the way, to deal with that pain, pain pills, steroids, medicine for my medicine for my medicine for my medicine. It wrecked my entire system, my endocrine system, my body, my muscles, my skeletal system, my heart. Uh, everything got out of whack. It was a five-year nightmare, okay? So when I talk about EXP saved my family and saved my life, it really did. Like the only good news out of this entire ordeal was the fact that I had had passive income and I could appreciate living a residual income lifestyle. I had just enough. If you look here, I had just enough passive income. I maybe brought in 10 people. They had all maybe brought in two each. So I had about 30 people in my entire group, okay? And I was making about three grand a month at the time. Just enough. All right. I made the mistake yesterday of saying I'd, I'd probably be back in Ohio. And then there was somebody from who grew up in Ohio. So I won't say that anymore. But I say, because Ohio's great, but that's where my in-laws live and they're vets. And uh, I'd probably be helping them birth cows or something right now if I hadn't have been a part of EXP. Now, again, I probably would have been an okay veterinarian too. I'm not saying. I, but I like my lifestyle in Scottsdale. I like, we just built the house. My wife was pregnant with our second child. And uh, again, I didn't want to go back to the snowy winter. I had no, no part of that. So anyways, long story short, EXP, business insurance, right? It doesn't have to be an injury. It could be the D word. It could be a family member that takes ill and now you've got to spend more time being a caregiver than you can be a realtor. Or what if you want to travel more uh, or spend time with the family, right? So, so just having that freedom of having that little extra money is life-changing, right? Um, so I, I know there's not too many new realtors in here, so I'm going to kind of breeze through some of these some of these slides that are a little more coaching because I want to show you some of the. Well, actually, let's talk about some of the tools real quick. So we do a lot of training, a lot of education. We give you a lot of tools, a lot of support. This is actually just one example of one of the systems that we provide. It's called EXP Expressway, uh, the Agent Expressway. Um, every one of these is a self-directed learning mod. So if you clicked on it, creating a website, agent attraction, marketing, working with sellers, buyers, technology, whatever it is, you click on it, it takes you to a video, a tutorial, a checklist, um, you know, it's very, very interactive. And you can basically teach, train yourself on demand on any part of real estate business that you want, um, when you want. Okay, and that's just one. I showed you the classes, I showed you the calendar. We've got about 50 hours of live training every week, and we've got on demand training because we lead with education. We actually call EXP a university at some level, right? It's EXP campus, EXP cloud campus, university. So we're all about teaching you the best tools. Now, some people will say, well, how does that, how is EXP good for my consumer? Well, if you've got the latest and greatest tools, You've got the latest and greatest training from some of the best people in the world, not just your local cubicle area. Um, are you going to be able to service your clients a little better? I think so too. So, um, so that's one. Conversion Commission Inc. Um, these are like the Cadillac of engines to put on your website. Okay, um, and uh, you know, I, I used to be the national lead manager for EXP. I remember when we used to have to take an IDX system called WolfNet, force feed it into Real Future CRM through Dropbox emails had round robins that you had three minutes to pick up your phone. I mean, it was a nightmare. And we were like patching together, like, you know, we were like mash unit, uh, you know, trying to get things patched up and, and fixed. But now they have it all in one system. Not only that, but it's got 24 seven chat. They'll text your clients from your cell phone. They've got preloaded drip campaigns, 24 seven tech department to help serve us. We've got thousands of hours of training videos. We have live training for both of these systems. And, and basically, has anybody ever bought Commission Inc. or Conversion on their own? How much did it cost you, Darren? $3.99. $3.99. And what was, your, what was your down payment or your deposit? $600. So $600, $3.99 a month. That's a lot of money, okay? And I've heard some people paying as much as $1,500, $500 a month, right? So, I mean, that's a, like a six, dollars $7,000 a year investment. Well, our cap's only $16,000. So there's you know a third of your cap right there just from conversion, okay? Um, 
Because I think that's, this is to me, i just kind of been playing with this slide lately as I've been doing this and going around the country because I think to me, the, the biggest question anybody should ask of their brokerage is what is going to be the return on my investment if I come work for you? I always laugh. By the way, you know, you get new realtors and they go, oh, I just got hired by Keller Williams. Got a job. You know, and I'm like, well, we'll take anybody. Like, what are you talking about? You just got hired. You know, most brokerages will take, take you, right? Uh, you, you should be interviewing them. You, you're not going to be interviewed, right? You should be asking your brokerage, if I give you some of my money, some of my fees, some of my time, if I'm going to pick up your flag and run it around and, let, uh, and help spread your brand around, what are you going to give me back? And I think that is the most critical question that everybody should ask of their broker. What is my return on my investment? Well, let me show you one little cool piece, just, just one sliver of one of the things we do for agents at eXp to kind of answer that question. And by the way, sometimes I'll ask a bunch of realtors, I'll say, hey, hey, if I could show you how to make more money doing absolutely nothing more than you're already doing, how many people would be interested, right? Of course, everybody's interested. To make more money doing absolutely nothing more than I'm already doing, I'm in. All right, well, here it is, okay? This is the proof. So basically, uh, we have what's called a direct stock purchase program or a self-directed you know, self asset program, right? Basically, you can put up to 5% of every closing, the GCI, so if it's a $350,000 home sale, which I know is like a one bedroom condo out here, um, but basically a 300, maybe, right? Not even, uh, barely, a loft, uh, you know, uh, a, a double Y. So basically six, GCI is a, uh, 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 the top number, right? So 5% of a, you know, three, 400,000 home sale, maybe 10 grand, you're putting $500 of that total commission into buying 20% off discounted stock. Now this is a huge piece of our puzzle, okay? So really t t focus in and, and, and check this out. So listen, I had a friend of mine, he's in Massachusetts, his name's Chris. He's got a terminally ill uh, son. Uh, he's basically a stay-at-home father. And um, he's, he's an amazing guy. He's an a, a engineer by trade. He's a very techy, cerebral kind of guy. But he's not out with the people. He's not gonna do much on the attraction front, okay? He hasn't done much at all. But he wants to have something to show for a life in sales, right? Just like the rest of us. So I asked him to chart out all the stock that he has bought through the direct stock program, right? So if you look here, here's his closings. It was basically a 15-month period. He's almost doing a deal a month. Some months he did two, some months he did none. But effectively, in about a 15, 16-month period, he did about 15, 16 deals. And this is how much he paid out of every closing. And he bought the stock at a discount. Right, so you know this closing was what probably twenty grand ish, you know, eighteen twenty grand. So he's not missing eight hundred bucks. Um, you know, you had a good closing, or let's say somebody who's not with the XP, who had a good closing last month. Okay, well let me ask you this: anybody who had a closing, did you take five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars out of your closing and put it in your E Trade account? Anybody do that? You should, but you don't because you don't know when the next deal is coming, and some of that money is already spent because it's been a couple months, right? Um, believe me, I've lived this life for a long time, so I'm, you know, I'm very, I'm not trying to bash anybody because I was, this is me. This is all these stories I'm telling her from firsthand experience because I remember being three months in the hole and then getting a big check and then two weeks later being like, where'd all that money go? Like, I, just, I just made 18 grand and now it's gone. That's crazy. So you stop putting that money into your investments. You stop paying for lead generation or you don't pay for lead generation. You're certainly not investing it on the stock market. Well, eXp will take it out of your closing before it even hits your bank account and we'll roll it into this discounted stock program. So here's the key number. This gentleman in a 15 month period accumulated about 15,000 shares of stock. Okay. He paid 11 for it. And I think today we're trading at about, I don't know, a little over 12 bucks. So what is that, 12 times 15, somewhere like 180, 190, how much did he spend? 11, and so what was his paper gain? 180, 170,000, 160,000-ish. So that was his return. Let's just use this number. $150,000 for investing 11, and selling houses at eXp, right? He's already selling these houses. He's gonna sell these houses somewhere. Now, if you sell these houses at XYZ Brokerage, are you getting this? No. You're not getting it anywhere but at eXp, right? So this is powerful. This is life-changing. Um, this gentleman is 30 years old, okay? He's gonna sell houses for the next 
15, 20 years, depending on, you know, maybe he might retire sooner than that. But, but at some level, how much is he going to have to show for a life in real estate sales? You thinking about reactivating that Arizona license now? Because <laughs> we can show you how to monetize it. All right, so anyways, um, we also give out stock a number of other ways. Okay, these are stock awards. By the way, this stock, you buy it, you own it, you can sell it right away. This stock is vested over a three-year period. All right, so we do want you to stick around for a while. Don't just come and grab a bunch of stock and leave. Um, but you're not going to want to leave anyway, right? We're hoping this is your last stock. Okay? If you've been bouncing around, typical realtor spends four or five uh, of, uh, before the course of their career will be at four or five different brokerages. And, uh, and so basically, um, uh, uh, we want this to be your last stop. So here we are, a little over 8,000 agents. You actually get 50 shares of stock when you do your first deal with the XP because we want you to be an owner right out of the box. We'll give you 100 shares of stock when you cap. So when you do your $3 million sale, you're now a capper. Did you get your stock? Check your equity profile at eXp Enterprise. I bet it's sitting there. Look, sitting there. Congratulations, Capper. Um, and then you also get 100 shares of stock for everybody you introduce to the company, which is kind of cool, right? And by the way, you're just introducing people to a really cool opportunity. As a matter of fact, it might even be a life-changing opportunity. I don't think of it as recruiting. I think of it as sharing. I think of it as educating. I think of it as, uh, as uh, attraction, right? You, by the way, let's pretend... Uh, you know, Brendan, let's say you're my brother and, you know, we're twin brothers and you live in New York and I live in California and, uh, and I joined eXp and we're both realtors and, uh, and, and after 10 years, uh, I never tell you about it and now I've got millions of dollars of equity and I'm making, you know, 20, 30 grand a month in passive income. Um, are you going to still be my brother? <laughs> it should at least give you the opportunity to say no, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, you're, you're doing them a disservice not showing people this, okay? So I just want everybody to understand. Because a lot of people start going, you know, when I show this to a room of people that aren't with the company, they start going, I'm not a recruiter. I could never do that. And it's like, well, you never had a reason to. You know, you really had a disincentive to recruit at your old company because if you think about it, if you brought people into your old company, less leads, less resources, less access to the broker, less time with the admin, right? So you actually would kind of do one of these and like start playing defense and saying, hey, I don't want anybody else to join this company. I don't care that we're growing. I want us to stay small so I can get all the resources for myself. So that's why you weren't a great recruiter. But we're not recruiting. We're tracking and we're sharing opportunity and it's life-changing opportunity. And here's my favorite, one of my favorite ways. Anybody do over 10 million on average? 10 million a year? Okay, okay, I don't either. Although I have a $6.5 million listing in Silverleaf, if anybody has a buyer, um, we can do a little uh, referral here. But, uh, but if you do do 10 million, um, you get your cap back in the form of stock, okay? Or if you do 20, maybe you did a bunch of, bunch of uh, a number of deals, a bunch of units. Um, well, then you would actually qualify for the ICON program, which basically means you get your $16,000 back in the form of stock. It's not 16,000 shares, it's $16,000 worth of stock. Well, that's powerful right there. But Brian, I don't do 10 million. Why does this apply to me? Okay, great question. Um, here's why, because you might know a $10 million a year producer, and you might be able to bring them over to the company, and this might be a life-changing moment for them. And what did you just effectively do? You just leveraged EXP's equity to grow your organization, right? Does that make sense? Any questions on that? So you're leveraging the stock offerings to grow your business. Same with this one, right? 100 shares of stock, okay? So if I brought in everybody in this room, let's just pretend this front row is my people that I introduced. Everybody, I brought all of you in. But let's say Jackie is bringing her entire team of people behind her, right? So that'd be my level two. Well, I would get 100 shares of stock for bringing in Jackie and everybody else, but then Jackie gets 100 shares of stock for, sorry, I don't want to blazer anybody's eye. So Jackie would get 100 shares of stock for everybody she brings over. Okay, so if she's a team leader or a boutique broker owner, I'm effectively acquiring, right? I'm leveraging the company stock offerings to grow my organization. They come into my cash flow business vis-a-vis -vis the rev share. The company gets the agents. The team broker owner gets the stock and everybody wins, right? It's a triple win and effectively, they're not getting my stock, they're getting the company stock, right? The company's cutting the check. So I'm now, if, if you want to, I think this is the highest and best use of the opportunity, but you can effectively go into the acquisitions business and you can start acquiring, instead of bringing people in one at a time, why not approach that boutique broker owner that may be struggling to keep the lights on? 
I say, hey, instead of shutting the doors or, or hemorrhaging money, I've got another option. I might just be the white knight that comes to the rescue, right? You just never know. I mean, how many people in here have been a broker owner before? Um, or know a broker owner, okay? Um, th there's a joke in being a broker that being a, being a, you put the word broke in being a broker, right? Has anybody ever heard that? <laughs> because it's tough. You got to do everything. You got to pay for everything. You got to provide the infrastructure, the tools, the support, the training. I mean, ha has anybody ever worked for a, a small boutique? Is it challenging sometimes? Like maybe you wanted more training, you know, maybe you wanted some leads and what was usually the answer? Can't afford it, right? Thank you. We didn't set that up ahead of time, I promise. And so, um, so basically, right, I mean, being a broker, there's a lot of people, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to approach people. Take this opportunity and show it to as many people as you can because you just never know. And I'll tell you a crazy story about Gene Frederick. Gene was in a, uh, a leadership class with another gentleman at EXP who's, who's an early adopter, early leader. And he just thought Gene Frederick was too big. He didn't approach him. Somebody else did, though. And guess what? Gene came over, right? So doesn't get more entrenched than Gene Frederick, by the way, okay? And, and there's a lot of people and there's a lot of stories like that, but you just never know. I think we just had some major people join in San Diego. I'm sure you guys have heard, you know, obviously even Darren Scott and, and, and Jackie Mitchell. I mean, these are people that know a lot of people. They've been, lived many lives in the real estate industry. I'm actually have them come up and tell a little bit of their story, so I'll, I'll, I won't spoil the surprise, but, um, but basically, you know, you just never know. So we're doing them a favor. You're sharing opportunity. Don't be afraid to reach out to these people. And now you actually have an amazing tool in the form of Icon Agent Program to also give them more, right? And we're gonna pull them up on stage and we're gonna make them icons. You know, we talked about this being a historic time for this company. Well, think about that. I mean, these icons will be legends. I mean, everybody in this room today that's with the XP or thinking about joining, the next 10 years, next 20 years, you might go down in the history books as, you know, whatever, right? One of the best producers, one of the best expansionists, one of the best dressers. Whatever. <laughs> um, so residual income, it's great, okay? It works. Here's how, here's how the residual income uh, actually flows, okay? I'll, I'll try and be brief here. But basically, everybody you introduce to the company, and this is for the vendors and the, and the partners here, everybody that they, we introduce to the company, you make 3.5% of their gross commission up until they cap. So that applies to anyone you personally bring in. So the max you can earn on a capper is $2,800 per person per year. Okay, well, so uh, someone threw this at me the other day and I kind of like this. He goes, hey, how many people did you invite today? Did anybody invite, but you probably invited a few people. Did some of them say, hey, no, I got a listening appointment to go on or, or whatever? Well, I would argue bringing somebody to a lunch and learn like this is worth a million dollar listing appointment. And here's why. How much do you get on a commission on a million dollars? On a million dollar sale? 30 grand? 30 grand? Okay. So average person stays with a brokerage for about 8 to 10 years. So you introduce one capper to this company. That's 28 grand over the next 10 years. Right? Okay. Now, that's not if they, that doesn't even count if they started introducing people and they started introducing people. And they, so whenever people say I'm too busy or I'm, I can't do that, I'm always like, oh, think about it. You know, it's just math. Hashtag, it's just math. Right? Um, so, and really, that's a great hashtag. I'm, I'm trying to roll that out. You, can, you guys can help me. Uh, hashtag is just math, EXP. Um, so anyways, um, and so let's say they introduce somebody. So you can make 0.2% on that person. And then if they introduce somebody 0.1 and they 0.1, 0.1, all the way to 0.5, 0.5. Now this isn't 5%, it's 0.5 of a percent, half a percent, or 10% of a percent, or whatever. All right, I'm not a math guy. I was a philosophy major. Um, but so basically, um, but, but that's good money. That's long term. You know, that's if your organization grows. That's if you only bring in one person and they never bring in another person. You still get a piece of everything. Now, what about these numbers, Brian? Those are bigger than that. How do I get that? Well, here's how you get that number. You bring in four more people. Now your front line is five. You personally introduce five people to EXP. You have now unlocked level two exponential bonus gets added to the expansion bonus for a total of 4% on level two, or $3,200 per capper. Well, if you do the math, uh, you know, every million dollars worth of sale underneath you is worth about $1,000 up until they cap. So even if you're bringing a million dollar a year producer, you're still making $1,000 per year. 
Okay, that's pretty good money. And if you start multiplying that out, and by the way, because we're a cloud-based company, because we're not just using our office to attract people and say, hey, we've got this great class A office space that's in the heart of the market, whatever, whatever, which really exclu- you know, basically creates a six mile, 10 mile um, target zone that you can really attract from. You can now attract people unlimited across the country and in Canada, and you can use the cloud office to meet them. You can use all of our tools and training and webinars and videos to show them the information. You can bring them to our EXP Explained classes that we have in the cloud Wednesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. You can bring them to a lunch and learn. Um, Look at the person who invited you today. How hard are they working right now? I mean, Darren's busy on his phone right now, but other than that, how many people, no, I mean, but how many, are they working very hard? No, because the whole point is this is we're trying to make it easy. I'm setting the table. Jackie, Darren helped us set the table. You just need to be a good inviter. And by the way, after I leave today, don't wait till I come back next year. Start doing this every week. Start setting the table. As you start growing your organization, you want to make it easy for them to become inviters. Start building the machine. Start replicating the, mo- the, the model because that's how you'll get to this, right? That's how you'll start making a lot of money. And so basically, um, let's just use, okay, Brian, I'm not going to go bring in thousands of people. That's, that's, that's too much. Um, and if you think about that, right, 1,000 people, which that's how many I have in my group, 1,000 people. Um, most of it's come out of the last two years. I've added 800 people in the last two years. I've actually added 40 people since last Wednesday to my group. Um, each person I use is about $1,000 on average per year. So 1,000 people times 1,000 is a million dollars a year, okay? And passive income every year, million dollars a year. There's not too many opportunities in the world where you can earn a million dollars a year in passive income, let alone in real estate. All right, so let's just say, let's slow down, Brian. Take it easy. I got to sell houses. Let's not get crazy. Okay, I got it. Well, let's just say you bring in two people a year for the next five years. Let's actually pull out a piece of paper and write that down in your business plan. I'm going to put two people into EXP every year for the next five years, and I'm going to show them how to put two people a year into the company over the next five years, okay? So, so you bring in 10, and they bring in 10 each. And let's just stop right there. 10 people who bring in 10 people each, okay? And we're just going to talk about the first two levels. We're not going to go deep. We're just going to talk, talk about these first two lines. So if you have 110 people, and they're all cappers, of course, you're making, that's, that's your five-year retirement plan. $350,000 per year off of 110 cappers. Now, let's say they're all doing a million. That's still six-figure passive income. Anybody else have an opportunity where I can earn six-figure passive income? Because I'm looking for opportunities, right? Um, I actually had a guy come up to me the other day at a party. He goes, hey, are you an investor? And I was like, I had never been asked that question. I was like, I could be. <laughs> like, what are you at? But he, I, I thought that was such a great question to ask somebody at a party, though. Like, hey, are you an investor? Um, and so, but think about that, right? 110, you can do a lot with an extra 100 grand a year, can't you? Right? How, how would that help your lead production machine? What about um, paying for open house signs for your group or yourself or buying better signs or buy, buying fancy shirts with your name on them or whatever, right? I mean, you can do a lot with that. You can start investing it. You can start buying your own properties. Pretty incredible, right? And that's not even getting into levels three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, so you can earn a lot of money. Here's a gentleman, by the way, well, Brian, I got to sell houses. I can't have this take away. No, it actually adds to your sales business, right? Um, but here's a guy who sells two deals a month out of Tucson, Arizona. Very unassuming, regular Joe guy, father of uh, some high school kids. And, but he still sells two houses a month. But he also brings in about a person a month. And look at his rev share check a month. That's a month. Okay, so could anybody use an extra 2500 bucks a month? That's a car payment, maybe a mortgage payment. Um, maybe your cell phone bill or, you know, whatever, right? So that wouldn't, wouldn't you like to have your brokerage pay for your mortgage and your cell phone and your car payment? That'd be pretty awesome. And you don't have to bring in a lot of people. I mean, he's only got 27 people in his entire group. He did this in 16 months out of Tucson. You know, I don't know how many realtors are in Tucson, but not as many there in Orange County or, or Southern California. That's for sure. So here's a guy that still sells houses. He's building the model like we showed him how to build it. And he's already making two, three grand a month in his first less than two years. Another guy that's been with us for two years is making this a month. Man, I want to be this guy. All right, I'm working on it. All right. But so here's a guy that, uh, uh, you know, actually has built 
other major real estate companies up. So he kind of knew what he was doing. They built the machine. They actually invented the game at some level. Uh, Rob and Gene and, and Tracy and Scott and Pat and all those people. But, but really, Rob and Gene built the game. And now they're, they brought their skills to our company. Again, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, when they join your company, you start paying attention. You start doing what they do. You start working out like they work out. You start talking like they talk. You start wearing armbands and sticking your tongue out when you dunk. And so basically, um, this is who I train with, right? This is who shows me how to do what I'm trying to do because they're the best in the world at it. And, and by the way, I think this is an old slide. What's the date on that slide? 2017. This was 9 20, 2017. I think his latest check somewhere in closing in on 200 grand a month. So, you know, here's doing it kind of passively. Here's doing it aggressively, right? So, whatever. You don't have to do it, okay? Someone's going to do it, though, but you don't have to. But I would. I recommend you do it. I, and by the way, what are we doing? We're just sharing opportunity. We're just helping people out. Okay, I'm not twisting arms. I'm not selling snake oil. I'm not, I'm not making false promises. Um, I'm just saying, hey, this is an opportunity. Check it out. Do your homework. Find a hole in it. See what you can do. All right, so any questions on any of this? By the way, any question on the rev share? Even if you're with EXP, any questions? Things that you, does this help clear up a little bit? Because I know a lot of people join EXP and don't even know about this stuff. So I want to make sure that the people that are with us understand the power of the, the opportunity, the gold mine that we're sitting on. And I'm actually one that kind of fell asleep on the model a little bit myself. Or at least I thought I was like doing so well that it was like, oh, I'll just do some other stuff. But when these people join your company, it sort of made me come back to the sort of woke me up to just what kind of a gold mine I was sitting on and uh, that we're all sitting on. And by the way, a thousand people a month. I mean, they're coming anyway. Right, so we might as well put some feelers out there. You might as well fly the flag and let people know you're with the company. Okay, talk to your your vendor partners. Tell them, hey, if you know any realtors that are looking to make a change, <coughs> uh, let us know first. So, anyways, uh, this to me is a powerful slide because uh, this is my personal business model. And remember, we talked about, well, I don't want to take away from my sales. Well, how about if I show you how all of this will add to your sales business? And I do find that kind of a funny situation because people will be like, well, I just want commission money. I don't like that stock money or that rev share money. I'm not into that money. I, I sometimes I'll ask my wife, I'll be like, honey, when you go shopping on Amazon, do they take the stock money? She's like, they take the stock money. I'm like, do they take the rev share money? She's like, they take the rev share money. I'm like, when we went on vacation and took all our kids and brought a nanny with us, did they take our, our, our rev share money? They took it and no problem. Money's money, folks. You want money coming into your personal business, right? So this is my personal family engine that builds my business. And what's cool is, uh, as a real estate agent, I usually can block this part off, but I say as a real estate agent, you are um, at, you have access to the only the top part, okay, Th through your real estate business. So you got buyers, sellers, investors, renters, referrals. Okay, now I say, I recommend everybody add these other two income streams to their business. And you can go invest on the market. You can play, play the stocks. You can go invest in a friend's company, start your own company, be an owner. There's power in being an owner. By the way, you join EXP, you're an owner. Okay, but there's, but there's power in being an owner. And then find some form of passive income. I mean, it's great. Passive income is great. There's a lot of passive income opportunities that work well. There's a lot that don't. Uh, you want to be one of the early adopters. You want to be selling something expensive. But, um, you know, do your homework. Uh, but it's a $220 billion a year industry. So somebody's making money, right? But they're doing their homework. They're looking at the right opportunities. They're getting in early, right? We all hear about that. Get in early. Get in early. Well, you're getting in early on eXp, that's for sure. But here's what's cool. You join eXp, you get access to all three. Both you get from just doing this. You know, we talked about the direct stock program already, right? Um, so you get equity from closing houses. By the way, we talked about how you can use equity to grow your business and attract people, right? Leveraging the company's equity for growth. Now you got the residual coming in. And here's where the magic happens. I actually take about five to $10,000 a month and I'm reinvesting it into my sales business. Um, I've got a broker open next week at my $6.5 million house. I'm bringing in a string quartet, two Ferraris, a luxury magazine. We're doing a photo shoot. We're bringing in a hair salon. Um, we're bringing in food, catering. Duh, 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 duh. You know how much it's going to cost me? $5,000 for the party. Okay. I'm, bu I'm buying my team tuxes for everybody. Okay. Tuxes and dresses for everybody. Do you think I'm doing that if I'm not making 20, 30 grand a month in rev share? There's no way. I'm putting out, you know, the circle sandwiches, right? 
uh, from Costco, maybe. <laughs> it's a basel. And then I'm having my title rep bring me to the bottle of the water. Um, but that's basically it. Um, you know, and uh, so, the, so the, the residual, you reinvest it in your sales and it starts the loop over. And guess what? It doesn't just sit like this. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the more people, the more stock, the more people, the more stock, the more sales, the more stock, the more people, stock sales, more people. And it just starts to grow and grow and grow or what I call your business synergy system, trademark pending. And uh, so <laughs> same with this one, golden triangle wealth creation. Um, and instead of pushing the rock up the hill, guess what you get to do? You get to push it down the hill and watch it grow and grow and grow, which I have now called the snowball effect. And you literally get your business growing whether you sell a house or not, right? Powerful? Anybody feeling a little pressure? Anybody want to get started today? Does anyone want to run out of here and go start talking to people? Feel free. All right, yeah, me too. Start texting, start calling. Uh, start posting these pictures on Facebook. All right, but so basically this is the magic. This is what EXP can show us all how to do. If, um, if you, some of you are already doing it. The fact that you're even here today, pat yourself on the back, that's awesome. You're all early adopters. And even if you're still vetting this opportunity, uh, Congratulations on being open to opportunity because a lot of people aren't, right? I mean, Jackie, we talk about this all the time. Is it amazing how many really successful people are not even open to opportunity? It's incredible. And I, and it, I was actually sharing this story with Jackie on the way in here. Um, we, we drove by Del Mar uh, Racetrack. My mom was a private nurse for Leonard Lavin, Glen Hill Farms. He has 100 horses he raced at uh, Del Mar. And he was a 90-year-old billionaire and he, we'd go out for dinner. And one day I go, Mr. Lavin, what's your best advice? What's your best advice? Now I was a struggling realtor, and I'm like, what's your best advice? He goes, Brian, here's my best advice. It's okay to say no, just be 100% sure you know what it is you're about to say no to. And I'm just amazed at how many people uh, won't even look at this opportunity, they just say no. It's almost like we're conditioned to not be sold. Like, nah, I don't wanna even, nah, you're about to, eh, stop calling me. Like, but I wanna give you money. No, I don't wanna hear it. Okay, you're bad, not mine. All right, so anyways, um, we talked about being a broker and you know being time broke versus time free. By the way, a lot of successful people are time broke, right? Um, you know, you know, I won't ask you to raise your hand, but you know, believe me, it's a, a you know. As a matter of fact, let me share. How are we doing on time? Good. I see a few people tuning out, but here, let me uh, let me let me play. I'm going to play one video, and then we'll get back into something else. But I want you guys to. This is a good group for this. If it plays. Skip the video in five seconds. Uh, might, this might be doing you guys a favor here if it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, all right, we'll skip it. All right. So, long story short, the guy goes, "Hey, you, you know, when you're 18, you start working, and then you work and work and work and work and work. You better enjoy what you do, right? Well, that's basically, you know, find something that you're passionate about." and, and uh, make it your career, okay? Because again, time is everything. You know, you, there's a lot of things in real estate that don't pay very well. There's a lot of things you can spend your time on. Some pay well, some don't. Figure out what you're doing. High leverage activities, right? Something I've learned recently. You know, focus on doing high leverage activities. Um, as a matter of fact, there's no more lucrative thing to do than add people to your front line. But anyways, um, so we're all about brand. It's your brand that matters. EXP is kind of like the Amazon for your design. You're the brand. You're the designer. Amazon's the delivery system. It, you're the realtor. EXP is your Amazon, right? We we sort of help put you out there, get you in the hands of more clients, make you more accessible, more powerful, more informed as a real estate professional, so you can deliver that to your consumers. Um, but we're all about helping you flesh out your brand. And uh, these are just some examples of some people that I've helped recently. Um, now, I, I, I talked a little bit about how I broke my hip and it's not all bad. I'm feeling better. I'm actually running Spartan races. I'm training. I'm Wim Hofing. I'm jumping in cold pools because I've realized that, listen, back to my, my, my mom's billionaire boss, he, he used to have a toast and he would go, here's to wisdom and wealth and the health to be able to enjoy them both, right? And so I just, uh, you know, once now I'm getting my finances together, now I got to get my health back together because believe me, I saw my future as a 90 year old who couldn't walk and it's not pretty. And, uh, and I do want to live to be 100. I got a little baby girl, two year old Taylor. She's the cutest thing in the world to me. And I can never imagine, 
you know, I lost my dad. I was 35. It was pretty, pretty t- tough. Same year I broke my hip. It made me really question my mortality. And uh, I would never want to leave my kids when they were 35 or younger, right? That's just devastating. I don't even like thinking about it. It makes me want to cry. Anyways, so um, let's kind of jump ahead. I talked a little about this. This is the last couple slides, and we'll wrap up, and I'm going to pull a few people up here. But bottom line is this is one of my favorite things Glenn ever taught me, but he said, Brian, success leaves clues, okay? And I just want to, I just want to, I want to bring the house down a little bit, let you know the gravity of the situation. Here's the deal. I was the guy camped out up here, right? I, I knew where the gold was, and I wasn't even going after it. You know, I was sitting there going, eh, whatever. You know, this, oh, you guys all know Chilkoot Pass, right? Where they, where they couldn't get the gold in Alaska until they found a way over the mountains. You know, they were going over the avalanche zone or the bottomless pits. Well, once they figured out a way, did they still go over the avalanche zone? Did they still go over the bottomless pits? No, they just stepped in each other's foothold and followed the person who had found the path to the success, to the goals. Success leaves clues. The gold's over here. Well, here's the question. Here's the, here's the real question, right? It's now that the gold's been found, which aka EXP opportunity. Well, now that we've found a way to do it, um, the question isn't, is the gold over there? The question is, where do you want to get in line? And here's the thing, folks. You're all sitting right here if you're thinking about joining the XP. Uh, some of you that are just recently joined, you're already clicked in and you're going up. I'm coming down the mountain with pockets full of gold and a roadmap saying, I promise it's over there, folks. Go get it. Go grab it. Because here's my deal. I'm putting it in the bank and I'm going to run back up too. I'm going to slide right back in this line. I'm going to go back up and grab more and come back down. And I'm going to go as many times as I can. But here's the thing. The rest of the country just found out about it too. And they're coming. And they're loading up wagons full of people with pickaxes and shovels and steam-powered engines and horse-drawn wagons. And they're going to come and they're going to tunnel under every one of our feet and they'll pull the gold out from under your ground whether you dig your shovel in or not. Am I right? Okay. They're coming. The whole country. It's almost like, if you go back to that ice analogy, it's almost like ice cracking across a pond. That's how fast this company is growing. I mean, we'll... We're 1,000 agents a month now. We'll probably finish the year at two or 3,000 a month. I mean, that is like, I don't even know if any company's grown that fast. So please, stick your shovels in the ground. Start sharing it. Start telling people nobody's too big. None of these people. By the way, Tom Trong, incoming president-elect for the Asian American Association of Realtors. Jay Kinder, number two, Cobalt Banker. Michael Reese, number 50, KW Worldwide. All these people have recently joined DXP. Okay, Carol Payton, Cynthia McKenna. Uh, Kyle Whistler, uh, you know, Dave Beers. These people are not coming over for the logo. They're coming to get the gold. Now, by the way, I helped design the logo. I love the logo. I'm a big fan. Okay. I'm, you guys like the logo? Okay. Big fan. I, I was in on the, the daily collaboration. And here's the thing. What do people make moves for? They come for to make more money. They come because of the people. Well, we're great. We're a great group of people. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, I've been to all the events. I used to plan the events. Now I like to just attend them and network. And that's where Nell and I met. She was joking around. She's like, I'm like, where did I meet you? At speed networking? She's like, oh, at the bar. I'm like, well... <laughs> That's where I was most of the time. Uh, but we get to get, to get together two or three times a year. Um, uh, Jeremy and I were on a, we were at a happy hour last night and he was, cause some people are dogging Jeremy Katz and saying, well, you guys are in the cloud. You never get together in real life. And he was like, here we are having a beer in real life together, you know, and we were having a blast. I mean, we get to get, here's the deal. A lot of people go to the office to socialize. We, we go to work to work. When we get together, it's to have fun. Right? Don't be going to the office to have fun. All right? So we, we do our work where we do our work. We have fun where we have fun. And we get together two or three times a year. We have the shareholders meeting and the, and the EXP con. Uh, actually, shareholders in Vegas. Anybody going? All right. So I'll buy you a beer. Okay? It's going to be a blast. <laughs> At least. Uh, please, I, let me. Um, uh, <laughs> I owe it to this company to let me buy everybody a beer. All right, so, uh, but it's a lot of fun. Come if you can. If you can't, don't worry. We'll have EXP Con in New Orleans, in New Orleans, um, in uh, October. So usually October, April, right? And we always pick a fun place, great location, great resort. Um, by the way, we're getting so big that we can only almost do these in a couple's markets anymore, okay? Um, and, and I can't even imagine when we're 50, 100,000. So, hey, this is about the end of this, the presentation. I'm going to pull a few people up. Long story short, you know, if you build it, they will come. And what are we building? What I'm here to do, again, is show everybody in the room how to create a life they don't need an escape from 
or create a career you don't need a vacation from. Thank you.